We are going to be making a quilted dress from my pattern, the Sid Tie Dress, and it's gonna be a kind of big project, but we're gonna get through it and I'm gonna show you my entire process. So I made a quilted dress very similar to this one last summer. And at the time I didn't have a pattern for it. I just self-drafted it. And I have since made a pattern that is like the silhouette of this dress. Um, the actual pattern doesn't walk through the quilting portion of it. So we are going to do that today. Because of the quilted nature of this project, there is quite a bit of math and just like thinking through what we need for this project where normally there isn't quite so much of that. So I am really going full force today. I'm going to walk you guys through like in detail, figuring out exactly what you need. But I really want to preface this by saying if this whole like math setup portion is confusing, it goes over your head, you feel like it's too in depth, I feel you, that is my nature 100%. When I made my first dress last summer, I really did not plan out super well. I kind of just winged it and made it work, which is very much my style. So it's a little bit like, I feel a bit like a hypocrite telling you guys like, this is how you should do it because you can do whatever the heck you wanna do. And I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of like professional quilter people who tell me better ways I can do things, but this is working good for me, so I'm gonna show you how I do it and you have all the permission in the world to do things differently than how I say. Okay, so the biggest thing we need to figure out is how much fabric you need and how to arrange your patchwork pieces. But the first thing we need to figure out is what pieces of the pattern need to be quilted. So there are four pattern pieces that we need quilted fabric for and four pattern pieces that we do not need quilted fabric for. And I should say I'm doing the sleeveless version of the pattern. There's also a sleeve option in the pattern. You can add sleeves if you want to. You'll just have to figure those pieces out on your own. I honestly don't know like with quilting the fabric how they would like drape. I feel like it might feel a bit heavy, but Again, do whatever you want to do. So the four pattern pieces that we are quilting, the front bodice, the back bodice, and the two skirt tiers. The parts we are not quilting are the pocket bags in the skirt, the binding pieces that go around like the center front, the neckline, the ties for the bows, and then the binding pieces on the armholes. For all of those, I'm just using the white linen-y fabric that I'm going to also be incorporating into the quilted pieces. So I'll mention now, this fabric is a linen viscose blend. It's actually 85% viscose and 15% linen. So it kind of has like a linen-y texture to it, but it's very, very drapey, which I feel like is important for a dress like this because if you're using like a quilting cotton for the white pieces of your quilted fabric or for the backing of the quilted fabric, which we'll get into, then your dress is going to end up quite stiff and we don't want a stiff dress. So that's my recommendation. This fabric is from Joanne and I've honestly been using it for like three years. I feel like they've had it for a long time. So I'll link it in the description. You don't have to use that fabric, but that would be my, my recommendation. Okay, now for the pieces that are quilted, the front bodice, back bodice, and two tiers of the skirt. What we need to do is figure out how much fabric we're going to need for that. And instead of making one big piece of fabric that you would like buy from the fabric store and then cutting your pieces out of that. Um, like for example, we could just make a solid like three yards of fabric or whatever. I'm actually going to make panels of quilted fabric. So a panel that is exactly the squared off size of the front bodice, a panel that's the size of the skirt tiers so that I'm not wasting any fabric or any time quilting stuff that's just gonna be cut away anyways. Before we get into any of the pattern pieces and measuring what we need, I need to explain the sizes of the patchwork pieces that I have, the blocks of fabric that will go into the quilted panels. So first off, I have a bunch of these squares of fabric that I have assembled into two by four patchwork rectangles. So don't worry about this quite yet because you need to know how many squares you need to make before you start making them. So right now we're just figuring out all the like top level information and then we'll jump into actual construction. So for reference, these squares were all two and a half inches squared. And then when combined into this beautiful rectangle, they measure four and a half inches by eight and a half inches. So because of this measurement, I needed squares in those lengths and widths. So I have small squares that are four and a half inches squared. And then I have big squares that are eight and a half inches squared. So the way that the pattern is laid out, you can kind of see here is 
we have these patchwork rectangles going horizontal and vertical and then broken up by the large and small white squares. So because this is our setup for the blocks of the quilt, there are certain amounts of lengths and widths that these panels can be. For example, if I'm measuring a length going this way, we'll have a panel that's four and a half inches wide, eight and a half inches wide, four and a half inches wide, and so on. And then same thing, if we started with a large block, it would start eight and a half inches, then four and a half, then eight and a half, and so forth. So because of all that, I wrote out the like possible lengths so that as I'm measuring my pattern pieces, I will see what is the closest measurement that that pattern piece will fit within. So I hope this makes sense. I'm just using this like as my guiding graph of information. <laughs> so if I start with a four and a half inch wide block, it can be four and a half, then 13, then 17 and a half, 26, 30 and a half, 39, 43 and a half. And then the bottom row is if you started with an eight and a half piece. So they will like align every other. I know that seems maybe confusing, but it really helped me as I was measuring out my pattern pieces. I could just look at that graph and be like, oh, which one does that fit into? And then that helps me kind of map out what that piece will look like. Okay, so let's start off by doing the top tier pattern piece, which is piece G. And this is just going to be a rectangle, so it'll be nice and easy. This is pattern piece G, top tier of the skirt. And you can see here, it says we need two of these cut on the fold. And so we are going to do exactly what each pattern piece says. We don't need anything different. So we're just gonna measure this pattern piece to see what size of a quilted panel that we'll need to make. So measuring how long it is, it's 23 inches long and a little over 16 inches wide, but it's cut on the fold. So what we'll put down for that is that panel is 23 inches by 16 and a bit times two, like 32 and a half maybe. And I'm just gonna round it up to 33 because especially when you're quilting, better safe than sorry. Okay, so I'm just writing out each piece. We have piece G, skirt top tier, and I'm going to make two pieces of that that are 23 by 33 inches. So because of this chart up here, none of these panels are going to come out exactly to 23 by 33. And so I'm just going to find the measurements on here that are closest. So 23 would have to fit in with 26. It's whatever's closest without going over. So I'm going to make two panels that are 26 by 33 isn't on here, but 34.5 is. So instead I'm going to have two panels that are 26 by 34 and a half. Okay. And to really send this message home, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch out on here what that panel will look like. You don't have to do that, but that was actually very helpful for me, not only to double check like what the layout is going to look like, but also to make sure that the blocks of the quilted panels are visually how I want them to be on the dress. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a second, because once I sketch this out, I'll show you like where I want the gathers to be on this skirt tier. Okay, <laughs> this might seem insane. You guys can judge me if you want to. But what was helpful for me was to sketch it out like so. So this is an example of what one of the panels of this top tier skirt would look like. So the L's mean a large square. The P's mean patchwork because they can be either vertical, long and skinny, or horizontal, short and fat. And then the little S's are for the small squares. So large square, small square, patchwork. You are following along, right? So basically along the top row here, we have like a large square, patchwork, large square, patchwork, large square, and then so on, patchwork, small square, patchwork, small square. So the reason that I wanted to visualize this is because I wanted to make sure that the gathers were on as much of the white fabric as possible instead of along like a patchwork row. So like this top row right here will have three big white squares and then like a couple narrow pieces of patchwork that'll work good for gathers but like on the flip side this bottom edge down here will have three long patchwork segments and then two small white squares whereas that i feel like is not going to gather as well so this looks good to me the way that this is arranged i like it i'm going to keep it and i'm also probably going to end up not trimming any of the width off of this um, when I go to actually cut the pattern piece, I may shorten it a bit. So as you can see, the length, the normal length is 23 inches. And then the length, because of how big the patchwork is, 
is 26 inches. So I probably will end up taking a bit either off the top or bottom or maybe a little bit of both, but the width I'll probably just keep because it will just make the dress a tad fuller and I'm not mad about that, but we'll see when we get there. Um, one other thing to consider is there will be a bit of seam allowance loss. So everywhere that one of the blocks connects with another, like a large to a patchwork, a small to a patchwork, whatever, there will be half an inch of seam allowance lost. So that's one other thing to consider. Both the length and height measurement here is quite generous, so I wasn't too worried about that. But anyway, something to consider. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure the rest of my four pieces, the bottom tier, which is a similar situation, um, and then the front bodice and the back bodice. I'm going to measure them out just how we did with the top tier and then kind of sketch them out. Okay, I've sketched all of it out and I'm actually glad I did this again because I did this all a couple days ago when I was first figuring out what I needed and I actually changed the placements of a few things after I did a second sketch through. So basically we have our top tier that I showed you earlier and then here is the bottom tier. This is how I've laid it out and I specifically added, you'll see, I could have done the height of the bottom tier 13 inches, but I made it 21 and a half because if it was 13, then the horizontal patchwork would have been going along the top like gathers of the skirt and I didn't want that. So I changed up how it is. So I'm using a bit extra fabric and doing a bit more work to make sure that the gathers will go along the large squares on the top. So that's what the bottom piece will look like. And then the front bodice piece is pretty small. I'll need two of these. And I kind of did a similar thing there. I probably could have made a slightly smaller panel where the squares are laying. I wanted it to look like this. And then the back bodice is on the fold. So that one is wider. Um, and then for each panel, I counted how many patchwork blocks, how many large blocks, and how many small blocks. And then I added them all up in total. That's down there. So I need 58 patchwork rectangles, which comes out to 464 squares. And then I need 40 large white squares and 20 small white squares. So all in all, that's a lot of fabric. So the first time I did all this and measured it all out, I actually only had 416 squares, but I cut extra and I'm very glad I did because now that I changed it, I think I should be good. Okay, I hope that all made sense. I know it's kind of in the weeds. And like I said, normally I do not get this in the weeds when I'm just making things for myself. So absolutely feel free to not do all of this extra stuff if you kind of just want to wing it. So now that I personally have done all of my patchwork rectangles, I've cut out all my squares, it is time for me to go lay everything out. But obviously before I do that, I need to show you guys how to make the patchwork rectangles. So I will say really quick before I show you the actual assembly, like I said, these are two and a half inch squares that I did. You can do yours whatever size you want to, just keep in mind that will change all the other measurements that I showed you. You'll just have to do your own. But I found two and a half inches to be a pretty good size. So the way that I did these is I cut out all the squares individually and I think I had about 20 colors. And I tried to do a mix of solids, and patterns, different colors. I kind of laid them out all together. And then once I had cut all of the squares individually, I laid them in piles of, like each color had a pile out on this table. And then I went through and literally one by one matched together different two color combinations. And for me, I didn't want any of these combinations to be the same. I wanted all of these rectangles to have different matches and so because of that i sewed each of these on individually if you wanted to do a quilt pattern where it's just two colors on every rectangle it's like the same two colors or maybe there are only like two combinations or three combinations or whatever that would make your life easier because then you can sew like long strips of fabric together and then cut them in a more efficient way but because of the way I did it because I wanted all of these panels to be unique um no two rectangles are the same and so it wouldn't have been any more efficient for me to sew together like I could have sewn a one long strip that was two and a half by eight and a half and another one that was two and a half by eight and a half and then like chopped it into four pieces and then rearranged them and then sew those four pieces together it wouldn't have saved me any more time so that's why I did it that way. And it definitely takes more time to do it this way, but I really like the look of it. I feel like it makes the dress look more like homemade, if that makes sense. So anyways, that's how I did that. And now I'm going to show you how I made each of these squares. It's a pretty simple process. 
All right, so you can see here on the left, I have my stack of little duos here, which are just squares that are matched up with their pairs. And I'm gonna be sewing a lot of these. And so the way that I've kind of found it to go quite quickly and waste the least amount of thread is that I sew four pairs together. So in this instance, I have this like mustard yellow color and this pink color, and I'm just going to match these up four times and sew four of these little pairs together um, in a chain stitch so that I don't have to snip my threads after each time. And then once I've chain stitched those four pairs together, I'll snip them apart and then I will chain stitch again two of the groups into foursomes so that I have two rows of four squares. And I'll do that to all of my pile I have there until I have a big giant pile of rows. And that step alone might take you several hours, multiple days, depending on how you're breaking it up. So don't feel bad if that is the case. But once you have stitched all of those rows, then you're going to press your seams flat. And so kind of how I've been doing it is I press them all going one direction instead of opening them up flat. And you'll see the reason I do this is so that when you combine the two strips into the two by four rectangle, then the seams will be nested like you can see here. So I stitch all my rows in a big batch, I press them all in a big batch, and then now I'm going to attach each of these rows together into that two by four rectangle. And I don't even pin as I'm doing this. If you want to pin, that is great, and it will definitely help things stay put. But I found that it just, I didn't need it. It just took extra time, and I was able to line my seams up really well without pinning. So I also chain stitch these rows together so that I'm not wasting thread as well. So I'm just grabbing the strips that I've kept in their order so that they're all matched up, and then I stitch them together. This step also takes me usually a full day to kind of get through all of these rows, but it's worth it. It's gonna turn out cute. Once I've combined all those rows into their designated two by four rectangles, now I press that seam open flat and give it a good press, both on the wrong side and the right side. And I feel like this whole method that I've done here produces really nice corners for the patchwork. Um, hopefully you get the same result, but I don't stress too much about it, but I feel like they turn out pretty good. All right, it probably took you a few days to get through all of those squares, if not several hours at least. But now that you're done, you can pat yourself on the back and it is now time to lay out your patchwork panels like we talked about. So at the beginning of the video, we figured out what the layout was going to be for each panel. And now I lay them out on the floor so that I can truly like visualize what each panel is going to look like. I move the colors around. I do lots of like swapping things out, make sure there's not a concentration of too many colors or patterns right next to each other um, and kind of get a feel for what the dress is going to look like, what panels will be next to each other, all of that stuff. This step helps me a ton. I would highly recommend it. Once I do have that all figured out, I take pictures of each panel so that as I'm stitching them together, I put them back in the right order and then I stack them in a pile. You can stack them however you want, but I do it in like rows in a certain order so that I make sure as I'm unstacking them to sew them together, they stay in the order they're supposed to be in. So I stack each one, label it with a sticky note, and put them all in piles um, so that they all don't get messed up. Once I'm ready to sew together each of these panels, I find it very helpful to relay it back out on a surface like how I'm doing on this table here. So I'll lay it back out and then as I'm sewing it, I can kind of be stacking it back in place like you'll see here so that I can really visualize what it's gonna be like. You can see that I'm very like nervous about messing it up. I don't wanna like unpick anything or accidentally stitch things in the wrong order because I did lay it out so purposefully. So that's how I do it. I first sew together each of the rows here and this is just one of the front bodice panels. So it's one of the smallest panels that I have. Um, but especially with the bigger pieces like the skirt tiers, this was extremely helpful to be able to lay it all out. So I'll do it all in rows first then once each row is done, then I will press those seams. Same with how I did the squares. I press them all going one direction, um, complementary to each other so that the seams will be nested like they were with those rectangles. And then once those seams of the rows have been pressed, then I stitch together the rows to make the whole patchwork 
panel. I know that this panel is pretty small, but especially with the bigger ones, I do end up pinning my corners together most of the time. Uh, like you can see here, I use just like one pin because there's just one corner along this specific row of stitching, but I do find pins to be helpful in this stage so that you can keep all of your corners nicely nested together. And then once I've stitched each panel together, then I press those seams open flat. So in total, I have seven quilted panels. I have two front bodice pieces, which the one I'm ironing now is a front bodice piece. Then I have one back bodice piece. And then I have two pieces of the top tier of the skirt and two pieces of the bottom tier of the skirt. So getting through all of those panels does take quite a bit of time. But once it is done, it is time to pin these panels to the quilt backing. So normally in quilting, you have the quilt top, which are these panels, and then you have a backing, which is this white linen fabric that we're using here. And then you usually have um, some sort of batting in between. Obviously for this, we're not doing any batting because we don't want this dress to be any heavier than it needs to be. Two layers is plenty, but we do need to put some kind of backing on it. Otherwise you'll have just a bunch of raw edges of the quilt patchwork which you do not want on the inside of your dress. So you either need to serge all those edges, which you would have had to do from the beginning, or you need to quilt a backing onto it. And if you don't quilt any sort of backing, then it technically isn't even quilted. It would just be a patchwork dress. But because we are putting a backing on, of the, on all of these panels, then it is a quilted garment. So once I get the top panel piece all placed where I want it to be, then I'm going to mark my quilted lines with a Hera marker, uh, which is that little white plastic tool you can see there. And I freaking love my Hera marker because it marks lines in fabric, but it doesn't use any chalk or ink. It's just a piece of plastic that puts a little crease in the fabric. And honestly, it stays put very well. I did all of these pieces of paneling and then left them for a few days. I took a couple days break in between and they looked just as crisp and freshly creased as they did when I creased them the first time. I marked all of my quilted lines basically running through the center of my squares so they ended up being two inches apart and I will say I found it extremely helpful to mark all of the lines before I started quilting. Some people would say that you could just mark one line and then use like a bar on your walking foot of your sewing machine, like a quilt bar to kind of do the rest of the lines. But I found that just because of the seam allowance not quite always being even with each of the fabrics, I sometimes had to split the difference a bit as I was measuring these lines. And so I feel like I would have kind of run into trouble if I hadn't marked them all earlier. So I do highly recommend that. To attach these two layers together and keep them in place, I used curved safety pins, which are pretty common in quilting. Um, they definitely help, the curve helps a lot to get it through both of those layers without shifting things too much. Um, and I also used binding clips on a lot of my pieces as well. I just had run out of them by the time I filmed this panel in particular. But make sure you pin them together so that they stay uh, nice and secure. Fold them away for when you're ready to do your quilting. So I'm going to be using a walking foot on my sewing machine to quilt my panels together. And basically, as you can see here, there's feed dogs on the top of the walking foot that moves as your sewing machine is moving so that it's guiding the layers both on top and bottom evenly so that there's not as much shifting as there would be with your normal sewing machine foot. I would say this is not an absolute requirement, especially since there's no batting involved, um, but I would say it's highly recommended and I think a lot of sewing machines generally come with them. So the quilting is kind of time intensive, but it is pretty simple. You just do a straight stitch along the lines that you had marked. And the only difference that I do is I lengthen my stitch length to four millimeters. My machine defaults to 2.5 millimeters. So I just lengthen that a bit to four millimeters. And then I also, at the end of each of my stitches, instead of like snipping my thread, I just kind of pivot the presser foot around and go the other direction. So that's not a requirement, it's just something that I sort of do and I don't know if it's something that people normally do, but I've kind of picked it up and I run with it. Once again, we've come to the end of a step that probably took you several hours, but once you've quilted all your panels, it's time to cut out your pattern pieces. So we have our back bodice, front bodice, and two skirt tiers. And I'm gonna show you how I cut each of these because like we talked about in the beginning, I did kind of have a plan for them, but in certain instances, 
I made a little bit of extra fabric so that I would have some wiggle room as to how I cut it. So I kind of want to explain my process. So you can see here on the back bodice, I'm folding this panel over um, like I'm supposed to, and I'm kind of figuring out what patchwork pieces I want showing where. And I am glad I did it this way, even though you'll see I cut off a bit extra, like there's that entire two by four rectangle that wasn't used, but I am glad I did it this way because otherwise I would have been very limited in um, my options of how I wanted these patchwork designs to show up on my dress. So happy with the back bodice, turned out great, didn't cut off too much excess, and it's looking cute. So next up we're going to cut out our front bodice pieces, and these were the ones that I was the most, I had the hardest time visualizing this, and again I'm very glad that I left myself extra space because I wasn't sure when I initially mapped it out what side I wanted the center front to be on. So you can see here I kind of lay the pattern piece in multiple different spots to kind of get a feel for what that front bodice is going to look like before I cut and decide what I'm going to do. And the biggest thing I had a hard time visualizing was did I want those patchwork 2x4 rectangles to be along the center front or did I want those along the side seams? And after like laying it out like this I realized I didn't want them along the center front which is great, so now I'm just trying to figure out where I want the dart to be placed because I was a little bit hesitant about the thickness of this fabric and a dart. Um, I didn't want especially that point of the dart to be on patchwork because that would be even more fabric. So you can see where I ended up deciding to cut it is in a good space for both of the ties to line up and also for the dart to line up so that the dart point ends on the white linen fabric and it doesn't end on the patchwork. So I feel like all in all it comes out in a really good spot. Again I did have to cut a away a bit more fabric than um, I maybe wanted to but ultimately it was a good thing I did it this way so that I had um, a little bit of wiggle room and options. But I'm going to mark my notches and my darts the same as I would normally in the pattern and we're going to move on to the skirt tiers. So the top tier of the skirt, which is pattern piece G, ended up being basically exactly the size of the pattern piece. I'm actually not going to trim away any of it. Originally I thought I might trim away some of the length, but I feel like it's going to be fine because I think the quilted fabric will eat up a bit more seam allowance um, where I join the skirt tiers together. So I'm just going to leave it exactly the same size, but I am going to mark the notch for the pocket bags. So don't forget to mark your notches. Even though we're quilting things, you still need to be doing that. The bottom tier of the skirt is where I cut away probably the most fabric, but again, the way that I set it up was pretty intentional, like I explained at the beginning. Um, you can see along the bottom and top edge, um, I have a lot of big white squares because I wanted those to line up with the gathers and the hem of the skirt. So if I had done it differently and conserved more fabric, I would have had horizontal patchwork rectangles along the top and bottom and those would not have gathered well or hemmed well, they would have been pretty bulky. So ultimately I'm very glad I did it this way. Um, you can see I kind of figured out where I wanted the gathers to be. I didn't want them running along any sort of funky seam on that top edge. And then with the bottom edge, I also didn't want the hem to be folded up in any awkward spot. So I kind of figured out where the best spot would be for that. I also left a little bit of extra room at the hem um, just in case with the quilted fabric, I needed to do a wider turn up for the hem. So cut away some pieces on the top and bottom and that skirt is good to go. For the dress construction, there's really only a couple things I want to point out, one of which is the dart. You'll see here I kind of talked about this, I made sure that the point of the dart was on the linen. Honestly, it probably would have worked fine to have the point of the dart not on the linen if it did end up on a patchwork spot, um, but that's where I was able to cut it and I feel like it worked out really well because the fold of the dart was within one of the patchwork rectangles but then it ended on the linen so there's no bulk but it also wasn't super obvious because I feel like if the dart had folded on a place where one side was linen one side was patchwork it would have looked very obvious but I feel like the, the way that I placed it came out looking very seamless as you can see there so it's not like a super duper obvious dart. 
Now I'm very happy to report that the construction of this dress is exactly the same as the pattern instructions. I kind of was expecting to run into some things that I had to tweak or change and I was going to walk you through them and show you how to do them differently, but I didn't have to do anything differently than the instructions. So I'm very, very happy that that's the case because I already have a video tutorial for the Sid Tide dress. And so you can hop over there and follow that if you want a tutorial for the actual construction of the dress. Um, if not, you can follow your instructions exactly as they are and you will be golden. There are a couple things I did want to mention and call out. One of them is the binding. Obviously, we didn't quilt our binding pieces. That would have been a bit silly, but I used the same linen that I used in the dress in the quilting for the bindings, both for the armhole bindings, the neckline bindings, the ties here, and I found this linen to be great for binding. It was very um, malleable, is that the word? I don't know. It was like a bit stretchy and the perfect amount of fluidity to be a binding without being too stretchy. So A plus for this linen, it was a great binding. The only place I ran into any sort of difficulty was in the gathering of the skirt tiers. And it's just because the fabric is pretty thick and so it took a little bit of extra muscle. So just give yourself some patience there. You'll get through it. But a couple things I want to mention, um, you can see here, I only did one row of basting stitches just because that's how I personally always do my gathering. Um, I know in the instructions and in my other video tutorial, I do two rows of basting stitches. Um, that's probably the more common way to do it but you'll see I just have one. And then I also surged all of my edges for my skirts and my bodice um, before gathering because there were so many threads coming out from all of the quilted layers that it just kind of got overwhelming. So I surged my edges to kind of get that out of the way. That helped a little bit, but it's definitely not necessary. But once everything was gathered, my serger went through it great, my sewing machine went through it great, attached everything well, and then I just pressed my gathers flat. And that's something that I find to be super helpful, both in quilted garments like this and in non-quilted things. I always press my gathers flat because I feel like it helps um, the dress or the garment not be quite so poofy. And then for the hem, I ended up actually turning the hem up exactly the same as I normally would with this pattern. Um, and because I accounted for a bigger hem just in case, I did have a bit of a longer dress than I normally would have, maybe like an inch, inch and a half longer of a dress than usual, which I didn't mind at all. I feel like it looks super cute. Guys, this was our most adventurous tutorial yet. It took me a total of eight days, pretty much working full time on this dress to finish it. So if it takes you like weeks or months to kind of assemble everything, get through all of these steps, that is totally normal and totally fine. But I hope you love your dress and tag me if you make one because I want to see how cute you are.